today on Dr. Phil. This isn't just a battle of the exits. Both of you cheated in the marriage. Both of you lied in the marriage. It's an all-out war. Did you write a suicide letter and no. sign her name to it? No, not at all. The only way anything's going to work is if we're honest. Well, that ship is sailed. Mom has broken ranks. You showed up to court on my ex-wife's behalf. I don't get to see my grandchildren. We talked about you visiting or coming by. You moved to Florida and didn't tell me. Are any of y'all on medication? It's just one bombshell after another. Tanya is Doug's fiance. Fiance? Did you get her a ring? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Breaking news. Let's do it. Everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've heard long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Wilson, take I'm going to get you the help that you need. Five, four. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. I want to start today's show by reading a few lines from a letter a father gave us from his nine-year-old daughter. Quote, Mom, I caught you saying very bad and hurtful stuff about my dad. You are the person that is doing wrong. I want to know why. I am very mad at you and very disappointed at you. But the mom in question says her ex-husband manipulated the nine-year-old into writing this letter after their divorce. A fake suicide note, planning drugs, pretending to have a heart attack to gain sympathy. These are just some of the accusations thrown between ex-spouses Doug and Beverly. Both admit their daughter and 15-year-old son are caught in the crossfire. Take a look. I always thought we had a pretty good marriage, but love is blind sometimes. Our marriage started unraveling after my son was born. During the marriage, there were infidelities. I was unfaithful because my ex-husband was unfaithful. I actually had an affair. It was at a time that she had already told me that we're going to get a divorce. Doesn't make it right. I had told my ex-husband about the infidelities, and I told him I did it to hurt him. And he exploded into a rage. He was very physical, punching me in the arms, the legs. I was very scared for my life. The main reasons that Beverly and I ended our marriage was the lying and the cheating. And she literally came to me and said, I'll quit the cheating, but I'm going to keep the lying. I've never heard anybody say that in all my life, and I probably never will. Beverly and I got divorced in 2007. After the divorce, Doug would keep me from my kids. You getting ready for school? Mm-hmm. Beverly alienates herself from her own children. She skips on even coming to see the children. Three and a half years ago, our children described physical abuse from the mother towards them. I've never hit my children. I've never slapped them. I've never kicked them. I've, I've never abused my children. We had a very ugly custody battle. Doug claimed that I used drugs, that I used alcohol. He even presented a suicide note. He faked my signature, and it was in his writing. She claimed that I wrote it which I did not. My ex-wife actually went to my home and planted drugs and took pictures of it to present in court against me. I did find Doug's marijuana stash in the kids' playhouse. I don't use marijuana. It's just ridiculous what she did. My feelings towards my ex-husband are of disgust. I haven't hugged my children in four years. My kids believe that I'm the devil. It breaks my heart. I just want to be a mom again. All right, look. Do you have ownership in the problems here? Absolutely. Do you have ownership in the problems here? Yeah, absolutely, sir. What, what do you own? Um, during the marriage and fidelities, uh, that I'm not perfect, uh, uh, um, but after the divorce and with the children, I've really just poured my heart into the children and taken care of them. Right. Yeah. And have you helped or hindered their relationship with their mother? Oh, I've helped their relationship oh, with their mother. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Hindered that's all. That's, that's all I could do. Um, he would Beverly come and get the there, kids Beverly, in the middle of the night. I'd wake up and my kids weren't there. Okay, is that true? That, that she called and said, "No, that I, I did come not get call them. you." I okay, did now, not. Wait, 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 no. Look, look no. let me tell you something. Let, no. let me just let me just say something real quick because this could just be a real short conversation here. If if we want to improve something, somebody's going to have to tell me the truth. And, and you need to hear what I say yeah. 
yeah. before you respond. Mm -hmm. Because your response is going to be critical here. It can't be the way both of you are saying. There isn't a version of the truth. And I'm going to tell you something. When I looked at this, the only reason I agreed to do this story was because of the children involved here. Because shame on the two of you for managing this situation into the ditch that it's in right now. I agree. And if you think you've got the moral high ground here and are pointing a finger at her, let me tell you, if you're so smart, how come you've got this in such a mess, my friend? No, I and agree. And if you're so if you're so pristine, how come you've got this in such a mess? Oh, I've never how said long has it been since you've been with your children? I, I see them on uh, about once a month, mm. but he's usually there or his girlfriend is yeah. there supervising. Great yeah. job, guys. Yeah. Great job. They didn't choose this. No. You chose it. The two of you got married. Both of you cheated in the marriage. Both of you lied in the marriage. Both of you have manipulated in this situation. And so your kids are reeling from it. And you may think that this will be a great win for you if they're all with you and hate her. But let me tell you something. Hear what I'm saying. I will. Hear what I'm saying. This will backfire on you so bad you will never believe it. You won't see it coming. You will never believe it. The parent that alienates a child from the other parent ultimately winds up being on the very short end of the stick because these kids get smart enough to start thinking for themselves, mm -hmm. and they're going to look around and say, why did you do this this way? Right. And I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't want to have anything to do with either one of you when they get to a point of independent thought. I would hope that would be our nightmare, but I have not done that. Well, Doug says their children accuse Beverly of inappropriate behavior, which she denies. Take a look at this. My daughter let my son and I know that their mother had been coming in after they fell asleep and would touch our daughter, touching her hair, touching her leg, things of that nature. Then it was just shocking. It's complete lies. I would read her bedtime stories. I would rub her back. I would kiss her forehead goodnight and leave. She refused to stop, so the kids ended up writing on the wall, don't touch me, Mom. I saw that, and I was destroyed. Okay, do you, do you believe that she has sexually molested the daughter here? No, no, not at all, Dr. Phil. Y you not, don't not, believe that? No, not sexually. The only thing I was referring to there is what my daughter and son had told me. Let me, let me just say to both of you here, and I'm going to let you respond to this, but you've asked for my opinion. Absolutely. And, and you're going to get it. I want to. And you need to understand that I am especially trained as a forensic psychologist, and there are red flags that neither of you know that with a high degree of reliability predict manipulation and dishonesty. And I'm real curious to see who's going to wave those red flags the loudest today. I'm very troubled by that letter that was uh, written by your daughter. And so Very, was I. very troubled by Which that. Which I've never seen. So I've never I. seen that letter. Well, there's, unfortunately, there's many of them. Yeah. Yes, there are. Yeah. Which tells me that somebody here is allowing these children to deal with adult issues. Oh. Mm -hmm. yes. And asking a child to deal with adult issues is a serious transgression. Red flag, like a Navy flag man. <laughs> yeah. Something here is not right. Yeah. Doug says his mother betrayed him when she stood by his ex in custody court three years ago. His mother is here. She's going to explain why she made that decision when we come back. People might be surprised that I'm not blindly defending my son. At times, I think the grandchildren are afraid of their dad. Doug dictates to them how they should feel, what they should think, what they should say. They're like little puppets. And later, hold on. So, so you decided the best theory here is I'll make up a lie. Oh, yeah. I've been Send doing lies for the last three years. Huh? Yes.
Beverly physically abused our son for a year and a half. At one point, she had our little girl participate in the abuse as she pinned James down on the floor. She had our daughter come over and kick James while he was on the floor. That's one of the worst moments in her life. Well, Doug and Beverly are ex-spouses who are serving accusations of abuse at each other back and forth like players at a tennis tournament. Tricia is Doug's mother, but she's sitting on stage next to her former daughter-in-law today. Why? Because she says her son is the problem here, not Beverly. Take a look. Doug is very controlling, narcissistic, and abusive. He is an extreme manipulator. People might be surprised that I'm not blindly defending my son, but I really think he's wrong in this situation. Doug was a very happy child. His behavior began to change when his father and I got a divorce. At one point, Doug came after me, bouncing me off of chairs, and he punched holes in the living room wall. It was a terrifying moment. That day was horrific for me. At times, I think the grandchildren are afraid of their dad. Doug dictates to them how they should feel, what they should think, what they should say. They're like little puppets. I fear that maybe I would be that mother someday that heard my son did something violent. This family has been in crisis for a long time, and we need help. Well, I definitely agree with Tricia about one thing. This family is definitely in crisis. Let's hear what her son Doug has to say about their relationship. Hearing that my mother thinks that I could possibly hurt somebody hurts me to the core. I've never harmed my mother physically. I never would. I see lots of similarities between my mother and my ex-wife. My mother's extremely judgmental and extremely unforgiving. I've missed so many birthdays. My mother showed up to court on my ex-wife's behalf. She didn't speak to me. I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. I was devastated and betrayed. I'd like to have my mom back. Her head's filled with lies and character assassination on behalf of my ex-wife. I've, I've read all of your allegations, mm -hmm. and I, I've, I've read all of yours, and nobody is as bad as you each say the other person is and not currently in prison. Do, oh, do you yeah, really right. think this is an mm -hmm. evil woman? No, I know. I've known her forever.
won't forget this Why do I regret this? In my mind reckless Thoughts are feeling endless Sitting up I'm breathless Anxiety's infectious I feel so defenseless Betrayed and embarrassed I hate being open I hate being broken I feel like an ocean Filled up with emotion Anger ain't a potion Rub it on like lotion I can feel it soaking Reopen The scars have awoken I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go I don't think she's an evil woman. I think things have, in pressures, have, have created this mess and, and <clears throat> made her act in a certain way. By his text last night, I'm sure he doesn't think I'm an evil woman since he told me I'm still very, very special and he likes seeing me yesterday. It's part of the manipulation. It's just, mm -hmm. so I'll be super nice today. No, not at all. Not at all. We ran so into there's her no way accidentally. That you feel that way. And, and, I, want and my, I, I want a relationship with my grandkids. Did, did, you write, did you write a suicide letter? No, I did not. Okay. Did, did, did you write a suicide letter and, and no. sign her name to it? No, not at all. No, no, not at all. You referred to a letter that was presented in court. When we were trying she, to get the kids out she, of foster care, she you stated took it as that public it wasn't hers, and it me. was hers. <clears throat> It was not mine. Well, we attorney. asked you for the letter, and you said you didn't have it. No. My attorney had it at one time, and he didn't well, return Well, the, the attorneys don't throw away files. I agree. They don't throw away files. They don't throw away records. He if your attorney it. had it, then your attorney has it. Yeah. And, and we asked you for it. Why did you not bring it? Like I said, my attorney has it. It wasn't returned to me in the file. But, but you I could get it from original. your attorney. Oh, just a matter of time, but it, Beverly's right here. She knows that she that was her writing. I didn't writing. write the she letter. She denied it in court. And I certainly went and dated suicide. She denied letter. it. In, I've never written a suicide letter. She denied letter. it in court. Ever. <clears throat> did you write the suicide letter? No, letter? I did not. Let, let Absolutely me tell you, not. But did, nevertheless, Dr. Phil. No, uh, listen. Uh, nevertheless, hear this. Yeah. Let, let me tell you, because I'm just telling yeah, you. It's amazing. I, what I'm trying to do is is get you guys to change what you're doing. <laughs> Because yeah. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. if you came into a district court, in a family court, mm -hmm. and I was walking by out there in the hall, and they said, oh, Dr. McGraw, come in here. We're going to court appoint mm -hmm. you, and you're going to do this case right here. Mm -hmm. And somebody told me that there was a suicide letter mm -hmm. that had been signed. Mm -hmm. I, I, somebody would produce me that letter. 
I would get a handwriting analysis to, do, to determine who wrote that letter, and whoever wrote that letter would be a watershed event in my determining who was playing games here. Mm -hmm. And trust me, that will happen. And you have that letter in your custody, and if you fail to produce that letter, mm -hmm. then it will be resolved to your detriment. They will assume that when you destroy evidence that it was to your detriment, and that will be a bad day for you if that happens. So I'm telling you, the court mm -hmm. gets involved here. If, if, if it was me, mm -hmm. I'd say produce the letter. I want to see the letter, and I'm going to analyze the handwriting, right. and it's either hers or it isn't. And if it's yours and you're lying it about it, it would go really bad for you, Mom. I understand that. Mm -hmm. I never and if it is yours night. or not Ever. hers, mm -hmm. that would go really bad for you, Dad. I understand. I'm just telling you where you're headed here. I I, I, I'm just trying not. to say. But we're here to be, learn how to be more civil and understand. No, we're each here other to better. we're here to Definitely, stop right? what's been going on. Absolutely. And somebody needs to tell me the truth. Where did the letter please, come Beverly, from? Please, Beverly, please let him know that, that I never it was wrote your a letter. Note. And we obviously have an attorney's and name. And I didn't that, date yeah. it, and I didn't sign it. There were letters written by you, allegedly, apologizing to his parents and grandparents. Let me guess, mm -hmm. they were typed? Yeah, they are yes, typed. They're, they're typed. typed. Here they are. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm familiar Is that with your them. signature? And later... That is no, the I, truth. No, this is the truth. I am for everybody. I this is the honest. only way anything's going to work is if we're honest. I would we be are being honest. Well, that ship has sailed. I wrote it down so we, we could see it. There were letters written by you, allegedly, apologizing to his parents and grandparents. Let me guess, mm -hmm. they were typed? Yeah, they are yes, typed. They're typed. They're typed. Okay. Are we're they done. signed by you? Um, I don't believe so. Well, no. that, you, I don't know. He, please. You either signed them or you didn't. Beverly. I'm just asking you. Did you sign them or you didn't? I would like to see them because you, you the next thing I know grandma. is that they ended up at all the families. Well, Everyone you told us that he, that, Beverly, that he stood please. over you dictating self-deprecating letters to his family. That's exactly right. These are the letters. Yeah, those letters. You said you wanted to see them. Here they are. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm familiar with Is that with your that. signature? Yeah. Yes, I believe so. I, I well, come so. on, you come on, feel free. It's okay. You, you either signed him or you didn't. Our, our handwriting is very similar. <laughs> yes, so, it is. I, no. That's, I, I'm, sure I, is very, I'm sure I signed him. Beverly, there's letters there to my grandma, two of them. She even wrote you back and you wrote her another one. Did you write come those on, letters are... of your free will? Mom? Complete duress. You know, What's trying to will satisfy mean? this man, and yeah, I'm sure I wrote them. I don't know if he altered them at all. He could have. He's no. very creative at creating documents. I'm low but tech. I will, I will well, come up to it tech. and say that I wrote them. I'm letters. lucky to work myself. I haven't read though. them in years. I don't know exactly what they say. I'm trying to get a straight answer from somebody. Okay. I wrote the letters. I, I'm just right now. I, I can I just imagine being it. one of your children. I would just so want to tell you oh, people to shut the hell up and sit down. <laughs> oh my God. This letter says, okay. you deserve to know the truth about your grandson and why our marriage is over. I have misled you to believe I am someone I am not. I have been very selfish, difficult, and untrustworthy. I have never been a proper mother or wife. I tried to hide my past from Doug and tried to make you love me. So if there was ever a question about Doug, I would have you in my corner telling Doug that he was messing up and I was a good woman. But the truth is, Doug is a very great man and an amazing father. Signed, Beverly. Now, did you write it? And if you wrote it, did you write it under duress? Did you write it under free will? And is that your signature? That's all I'm asking. Yes, I wrote that. Yes, that's my signature. I wrote that because I was trying to please him. He told me I needed to write letters and to pour out my feelings. And, and at the time, it was almost being completely letters. sarcastic. He's the best man in the world. Well, that was I've a done great everything thing wrong. Was and like he brought the these letters up in therapy, for... in court. He's tried to railroad me with these letters. And there was yeah. supposed to be just a therapeutic, just get it all out. And it was something that I need to do to make amends to you. Remember that? It was just a great thing that you did. No, it's not a great thing because it's ridiculous. No one would ever say that. I didn't, I didn't hear a lot of those things during the marriage. Okay, well, what you told us 
is that he stood over you dictating these self-deprecating letters. That's not what you're telling me now. <laughs> I'm just saying You're saying you did it because you were trying to get trying along. To... What you told us before is that he stood over you and dictated it. Which is it? He told me I to write not. the letters and to be very specific about certain events. He told us he stood he, over you he did. and dictated he did. the letter. He told I did not. not verbatim dictated. I did not. But you told me. I wasn't around. I was were... involved with the letters. He says she wrote the letters to his family admitting she was a terrible wife and a mother of her own free will. You say you've never abused the children. You say you found marijuana in his house. That and is true. These are pictures that you took and presented them to a judge. Correct. I've never seen those pictures. Y'all are oh, so please. playing with fire doing this. I'm telling you. I was advised by an attorney to, sit th to send those yeah, pictures to the well, judge, and that was ridiculous. It was you, a mistake. You, that backfired, didn't you, it? You, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so this was, this was taken, but uh, then you say that she planted marijuana in the house because you came up with a drug test that was negative. Negative, and I was out of town that weekend. They announced to her that I was going to be out of town. Okay, is it your marijuana? No, no sir. I don't. You didn't plant it, and it's no. not your marijuana. Come on. Okay. It was in and, his house. It, and you took a, it you, wasn't please. mine either. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> did, uh, let me just assume, I, I know this is probably insane to say, but let me just assume that you're both telling me the truth. Um, how old was your son at this time? He would have been 12. Did anybody drug test him at the time? Yes. Yes, they did. And? Clean. Right, of course. Yeah. She had a lot to gain by taking those pictures at the time, she thought. Yeah. She says that you forged a suicide note and signed her name. And um, you say you didn't do that, right? No. No. Um, she admitted abuse and said she would continue and tell the children, Daddy told me to do it. Uh, he was afraid to go home because his mother abused him. Have you physically abused your children? No, I have not. H have, have you in any way abused your children? I think I've acted ridiculous. I've been aggressive. I have not abused my children. I've never hit them, kicked them, punched them, nothing. So you didn't hit and kick and call your, his little sister over and tell her to hit and kick too? No, we were tickling time. It was tickling time. We're playing. That's not what our children have told us. I have us. scratched my son's arm. I did do that. I, I, that was an accident, but I did scratch. Well, we're talking about uh, you say a, that a the year children, and a half of that. You, you say that the children are afraid of her. His mother is acting out of control, and he was afraid. This was in a psychological interview. You have the letter that I wrote, and I said that the kids can come over whenever they want, but I'm not going to make them to come over. Anyways, did you we fake a heart attack? No, yes, sir. You did. Yes, you no, did. No, an accumulation <laughs> of all this chronic stress finally got to me last September, Dr. Phil. Do you see why I wrote? Well, you're supposed yes, to be I do see why you wrote. She I wrote down fake. the symptoms. You didn't go to the front of the store please, and ask a doctor. Phil, please, look at Dr. Phil. Please, You didn't ask please, a doctor to doctor check Phil. you out or call an ambulance. He had Listen, my daughter seeing, write down the symptoms he was experiencing. I didn't have your daughter do anything. And then he got in the car and drove them home 12 there isn't, miles. There isn't, he could have gone to the emergency room. This is all made up. He could have called. You could have gone to the clinic. Your girlfriend. Doug's fiance is here and says Beverly says she has some words for her next. I am concerned for Tanya's safety because of my experiences with Doug. I know for a fact that he has pushed her and been very aggressive with her in front of the children. Tanya is Doug's fiance, and therefore could fiance? become. I'm sorry. Fiance. Mm -hmm. Did you get her a ring? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Breaking news. <laughs> Doug lets my daughter do things that I would never allow. When she was eight, she started wearing makeup, mascara, eyeshadow, lip gloss. My daughter does enjoy wearing mascara and even shaving her legs, but she's just trying to be like her girlfriend. They're all doing it. It's improper, and he would say that she looks beautiful with mascara on, and that disgusts me because she's a little girl. Well, sadly, we're talking about how divorce divides families with children choosing sides. Doug and Beverly divorced six years ago. 
They have two children. They have a 15-year-old son. They have a nine-year-old daughter. We're not showing their pictures. God knows they've had enough. Okay? Uh, but interestingly enough, even though Tricia is Doug's mother, she has actually joined forces with Beverly because she thinks Doug is out of control here. And then we have Tanya. Tanya is Doug's fiance and therefore could fiance? become... I'm sorry? Fiance? Mm -hmm. Did you get her a ring? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Breaking news. <laughs> uh, know, uh, congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Well, I knew she had the cubic zirconia, but I didn't well, know. Well, Tanya's Doug's ring. fiance, surprise, surprise, who says Beverly is sabotaging her relationship <laughs> with the children. Okay, and I don't know if that's true or not, but we're going to find out maybe. Hell, who knows? <laughs> Take a look. I've been with Doug for three and a half years and we recently got engaged. I think Doug and Beverly have an unhealthy relationship as a ex-husband and wife. Beverly has told the kids that Doug is a drug dealer, drug user, and has beaten women. I think she was just trying to have the kids not like their father as much as they do. I don't believe the children would accuse their mother of abuse if it didn't happen. They're honest, good kids. Hey, guys. Hey. What's yeah. Doug has never badmouthed Beverly. He always talks her up in front of the children. I have never seen Doug be physically or verbally abusive with the children. I believe Beverly is jealous of me. She has stated to the kids before that I am living her life and these are her children and I'm taking her spot. Get this one. Mm -hmm. James? The kids started calling me mom two months ago. I realized that they're Real mother is Beverly, and I would love to have a relationship with her children as well. Well, welcome. Thank you. What, what, oh, what, what do you have to add to all of this mix here? What I would like to see a relationship between Doug and his mother, and of course Beverly with her children. Uh huh. Why? That's what I, because she's the mother of her children. I don't want to see a healthy relationship between everybody. Right. Yeah. Do you two get along? We get along for the children. Yes. Uh -huh. I help her when she comes to visit. Well, Beverly told the producers that Tanya passes information about Doug and the children to her without Doug's knowledge, which Tanya flat out denies. Take a look. Doug is definitely not aware of the fact that Tanya and I communicate regularly. She tells me that he's abusive to the kids, that he won't allow my son to have friends. I think he'll play it off like he knew the whole time. He will lie. But once he gets past that privately, he will be enraged. He will feel betrayed. He will be furious. He won't trust her. I doubt that their relationship will survive. That what? is a lie. You don't say that. OK, what, what are you saying? They're there's, driving. They're driving. There's students friends doing, everywhere. Okay. They're socially acceptable. They have no Tons of they friends have no having family. a blast and straight A students. Have, How do you grandparents? think it makes me feel that you're where's their, siding where's their with someone that's uh, sitting next I'm, to someone that's I'm siding from creating my own so side. much angst I don't, in our I don't life. get to see my grandchildren. You can. Why is she not seeing to, her grandchildren? Right? Well, that's a great question. Why Isn't aren't it? you seeing your grandchildren? We talked about you visiting or coming by. I would have loved it. I mean, I've never been invited. I've never I'm been I'm sorry included. you felt that way. You moved, yeah, that. You moved to Florida this Christmas and didn't tell me. Yes, or... you were told. Of course. Come on, girls. No. Come I, on I told now. Her. Did you tell me? Come I told on, the Tanya. kids you were Well, here. let me just move this along. You can do this without me it's here. It's all Tanya, children. Tanya allegedly emails that Doug pushed her and her teenage daughter had to protect her. Is that true? He was getting me in the car. I'm sorry? He didn't, he didn't push me. We were getting in a car. I didn't want to get in the car. What and is, Tanya, he, please, what did we say? No. you got to tell no. the truth. No. Be honest. No. I am being honest. Everybody's I honest. am. For everybody. I this am is the honest. only way anything's going to work is if we're honest. I would be We happy. are being honest. Well, that ship has sailed. Tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> so... That According, I, I have an email here. Yeah. I have an email here that allegedly is from you to her. Uh -huh. uh, it says from Tanya to Beverly. Am in trouble. Period. He pushed me. Period. 
Blank got out and protected me. When we got home, I left. Sorry. Did you send that to her? Yes, I sent that to her. Uh -huh. But, yeah, that wasn't what happened. That's the truth. Well, that is the truth. Well, that's the truth, <laughs> except what she's Beverly, referring Beverly, all you do is she's lie to me to about oh, Doug over and over. Anything. So, you know what? Okay, hold on. Hold on. Stop. 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 Please stop. Okay. The pushing. Please stop. Let me just ask you a okay. question, if I may. Yes. You, you say, did you write this email? Oh, yeah, I wrote that. Okay, but yet you said it didn't happen. No, it didn't happen. So Which part? Uh, so why did you write it if it didn't happen? Because every time I agree on how great a guy is or how good everything's going, it ends up going bad. So if I tell her it's going bad, then they go, things go good during visits. Oh, that doesn't even make any sense. Hey, hold on, hold on, it, that hold is on, the truth. hold on. So, so you decided... <laughs> The best theory here is I'll make up a lie. Oh, yeah. I've been doing lies for the last three years. The story. Huh? Yes. Wow. That's interesting. Beverly says that she has been falsely accused of physically abusing her son. We're going to hear what the son has to say next. About a year ago, I was seeing Doug again. We were trying to figure out if we could work on a relationship. He told me that it was a package deal. If I wanted my kids, I had to take him too. He was dating Tanya at that time as well. If you were to ask Doug if we were dating a year ago, he would say, absolutely not. Doug would lie about the relationship. Um. Okay, I came to his house what are you and, to? and Tanya was there. My policy with her is always, I'll tell you anything you want to know, whatever story you want to ask. When you shut up that night, me. I hadn't seen you in months. Oh, whatever. What You'd just been about? talking to me. You'd been over to my house and, well, you and you've been, been wanting to get back together. No, I'd never been to your long, home. Long, long, I hadn't long been to your time. home. But had you been to hers? Yes. Yeah, I visited before to be able to try to, to See, learn about the children. See, what I'm having trouble with this is... This is during the court custody. Mm -hmm. I understand, but you, you're like yeah, trying to sack fog, you know? <laughs> it, it, it's like the closer you get, it just evaporates. Uh -huh. You you uh -huh. contradict yourself in your own sentences. You don't even you don't even put commas or paragraphs between contradictions. You, you, you just said, oh, I hadn't seen you in months. Well, I'd been to your house. No. Uh-huh. What does that mean? I was talking about when she came to my home, I hadn't seen her there. You hadn't there. seen her at your home. You meant to say oh. I hadn't seen her at my home. Yeah, I hadn't seen her there. But you had seen her at her home. I had seen her previously before that at her home, yeah. Mm -hmm. Beverly, were you allowed just to when drop I was in at his off. house? Oh, never. No. <laughs> no, we, I wasn't I mean, allowed. Yeah. Somebody <clears throat> asked me a while ago why I never saw my kids at your house. The six years he lived in Joplin, you have to be invited to Doug's house. You can't just drop in and be a grandma and bring That's cookies. That's not true. Just say so you no. Know. I'm a pretty friendly old boy. You can come over and help and, no, and no. sit down and have a conversation. My grandkids wouldn't call me Trisha if, I'd love if that, I had a relationship a with them. They wouldn't say, who are you, when I run into I'd them love at the that. Home Depot I, store. I'd love Look, that. I have I no doubt. You, you would, listen, if you have how a do you think that makes me, ex -wife? How do you think that makes I'm me feel if that's when my granddaughter you. says, who are you, I'm in wondering if that's influenced you having a relationship with my ex-wife. I want to know also if his concussion in football, did that do anything? That's in, in 1984. <laughs> I heard that would too. That, would that do anything? Are you serious? In 1984? It was a very serious concussion. <laughs> Are any of y'all on medication? <laughs> I'm not. Would you, do, con do would you, you consider it? You We're not. We're not. She just said, do you have no, any? No, I'm not. I'm reading my Twitter board up here. Why are they on the Dr. Phil show if they have all the answers? Good question. Uh, Hillybean87 says, sounds like you all need to be honest with yourselves before you can work things out. There's too much drama here. Lucille Z says, these children need a hero. Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. Oh, yeah. Yes, they do. Beverly and Doug's 15-year-old son says his mother comes off as sarcastic and rude. Let's hear what he has to say. My dad and I have a good relationship. Oh, hey, man. What's up, buddy? 
I feel like my dad and I can pretty much talk about anything. About a year after the divorce, my mom started taking her anger out on me. My mom would hit me or throw me down, and she always told me that it was my dad's fault, that my dad wanted her to do this. It, it became scary to go over there. The worst thing she did that hurt me was she told me that the day I was born was the worst day of her life. I don't think I'll ever forget that one. My dad has never hit me. My dad has never lied to me on anything major. In one year, my mom came to my school three separate occasions to make fiascos that were needless. I was angry and disappointed and upset all at the same time when my mom embarrassed me. Tanya is the closest thing I've ever had to a mom. I believe that my mom wants to see me only to make my life harder. Oh, well, that What do you think about what he had to say? Oh, it's heartbreaking. It just breaks my heart, because it's not fair to him. None of this is fair. And it, it's not true. It's not, I'm, it, that doesn't matter, because that's how he feels, and that's how he sees me. But I would never abuse him. I didn't abuse him. You've admitted it to me before. Well, we're going to take a break, feelings. and when I come back, I'm going to talk about what it feels like to be parented by two right fighters. We'll be right back. Beverly has always been honest with me. Doug has been evasive, omitted, and lied. Doug has destroyed my relationship with my children. We'll never have a relationship because he cannot share the kids with anyone. Beverly just doesn't want any responsibility. She wants to be a single woman with no kids. If she stopped trash talking me, I think she'd have a chance. Well, I'm here with uh, Beverly and Doug. They were married for a period of time. They are now co-parenting two children that are caught in the middle of a crossfire between them. And the sad fact here is that agendas are being run by adults, but the price is being paid by the children. Doug, I want to ask yes, you a sir. question, and I don't want to hear a word out of anybody here while I'm talking to him, please. Do you recognize that while you may feel like you're winning, that your children are losing? Yes, I do. Do you realize that while you're wanting to make a case that this is a, a, a mother that has abused her children, been inappropriate with her daughter, been neglectful of their needs mentally, emotionally, physically, that these children growing up without their mother in their lives is hurting them significantly? I recognize that. <clears throat> and I don't look at her in that, that light anymore. She's, a lot of things have happened. It's water under the bridge. But these kids need her in, her, in their lives. Well, you know, talk is real cheap. Yes. And you say one thing out of one side of your mouth, one minute, something else, the same minute, out of the other side of your mouth. Um, and you, you kind of want to have the last word and be right in the situation. But the point is, mm -hmm. you. you are cheating them in service of an agenda by not having a relationship with their mother. You are what's called the target parent in this situation. There's a point at which you have to stop being a victim and start creating the kind of relationship and bond that you want with your children. Because your measure of success as a man and a father is to lead this family even once there is a divorce. And both yes, of you have done ridiculous things in this relationship. And I will help in this situation, and I'm talking about bringing in some high-level professionals that understand fractured families and alienated relationships and create that bond. As our gift to your family, I will bring you the professional help to do that if you will take it. 
Absolutely. We will accept. And, and I'll take the lead and be the man you're talking about. Well, we'll see. We, we will see. So. And we'll I hope you two will support this and sure. them and sure. recognize your boundaries and stay the hell out of what's none of your business and support them in doing what you need to be doing. Yeah. We asked viewers on Facebook this poll question, should children have a choice in deciding which parent they want to live with? I'll tell you the results when we come back. Well, we asked viewers on Facebook whether they felt children should have a choice in deciding which parents they want to live with. 78% said yes, 22% said no. Just wanted you to know what everybody out there is thinking. Um, guys, I hope you take very, very seriously what I've talked about here today. The behavior is yours, the consequences are theirs. And please don't be selfish. I want to thank all of my guests for being here today. These are teaching tools. I, if you see any part of your family in what happened here today, there you go. Thanks. So long. <laughs>